I feel like a star, but only strictly where I'm famous. I'm in this for the longest haul, like we'll see where it takes us. I'm throwing back these double shots like whiskey here is weightless. Cause, cause this career I chose was even riskier than Vegas, yo. Oh, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Colby Rebel Show. I am your host, Colby Rebel, where my goal tonight is to bring your loved ones a little bit closer. So get settled in, grab that drink, kick back, and let's get started. I hope you all have had a wonderful week and enjoying the bit of warm weather that we are all having and really making the most of the time that you do have. There is so much to talk about tonight. I have a lot of upcoming events, so I really do want to get started and kind of just show you what we have uh, going on, okay? So, so much happening. Uh, this is for me. If you don't mind giving me a shout out, this is the uh, Ms. Health and Fitness. So the goal of this here is for me to win. <laughs> I thought it would be uh, a lot of fun. So you just give a vote. You can vote every day. You can share it to vote. You can win $20,000, which I would love to do to kind of put together a uh, workshop. So please vote, hang out, and join me. But there is some other really fun stuff going on. Monday night is Colby Connect. So it is this Monday night, all right? This is an evening of spirit messages. So we do this online and limited, limited seats. And it's a very reasonable price. And the goal is for me to connect to your loved ones. And we bring forward memories and things that they want to share. So it's a great opportunity. If you don't get through tonight, um, grab a ticket and join me for the Colby Connects. Because that will really be a lot of fun. Okay? And then there's some more stuff happening. There's a lot going on. Um, we have here calling out. So this Wednesday, no, this Sunday, excuse me, this Sunday, I will be with Susan Pinsky for calling out with Susan Pinsky. We have a blast. She is an amazing host of her own podcast and uh, we've known each other for so many years now. So it's a lot of fun. So come and hang out with us there. And then, so a couple things. So Lilydale, you know, a lot of you may or may not know what Lilydale is. It's this beautiful spiritual center organization. It is in New York. It is about one hour south of Buffalo. And normally people gather by the hundreds and thousands over the summer. And they have nonstop classes and in-person events and healings and so much happening. Well, with COVID, they've taken a lot of their classes online. So I am honored and I am proud to teach two workshops Saturday, August 8th, okay? The first one is Grief No More. This is a really great workshop for you to understand your grief, maybe to work on it, uh, process it a bit, and you will be with like-minded friends, you know, because it's difficult when you lose someone and some people don't know how to get through it or what they can do or what tools are there for them. So this is a great workshop that I put together that gives you some great ways to connect to your loved one, to get that message and to just help with that healing process. The next one is platform mediumship. Okay. So this is the demonstrating medium and it's Saturday. It's a three hour workshop. And our goal is to help get you to the platform. So platform really is a more uh, advanced mediumship just because it, it takes that experience to know where you're going and how to get something and all of this fun stuff. So that platform workshop is a lot of fun. We have a blast doing it. So come out and uh, grab your ticket. So you could, you could do this in the comfort of your home. They're each three hours and they're very inexpensive. So you can do one, you could do both, uh, but come, come spend your week with me where there's a lot to go. You could spend tonight, Sunday, Monday, next Saturday, we could all get together. So anyhow, just wanted to share those things with you. And we have a lot of uh, callers in queue. So keep going. This is good. And let us, um, let us just jive in, right? I'm ready to, I'm ready to take some, uh, callers. I don't know about you guys. So you all know the rules. All right. 
No barking, no screaming, no speakerphone. Listen to your area code. What is that area code you called in from? Let's take a moment for that, okay? And just know what your question is. If you have gotten through recently, please hang up. That is just not fair. We want to be loving and giving to all. And you, you really do. There is so many callers that it, it really is. If you take up that call line and you know you got through in the last few weeks, then, you know, it's really about sharing it. Let's share it, okay? So here we go. Hey, 407, this is Colby. Who is this? Uh, Maui. Hi, Molly. Is that what you said? Or Mally? Yes. Well, Molly or Mally? <laughs> Mally. There you go, Mally. How are you, honey? I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing all right. What can I do for you tonight, sweetheart? Well, I've been um, wanting to just see if there's any type of message um, out there from my parents um, in the spirit world. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. And actually, it, you know, it's interesting because you have like some aunts and uncles in the spirit world as well. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Just because they, they, they just all at once showed me with family. So your parents showed me with their siblings and so they're all at once. Okay. Um, now I get this sense mm -hmm. where, let me see which one this is. You know, it's interesting because your parents stepped into, so both parents are in the spirit world, correct? Correct. Okay. Because they both stepped in together. So it's kind of like one doesn't want to back down for the other, <laughs> you know? So I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing mom wouldn't be afraid to go toe to toe with dad because she's like, you don't get to go first. And he's like, I get to go first. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. But, you know, I, I, I do have mom first. Even though dad is there, I don't think he's going to win this argument. But I, honestly, though, is your dad that kind of dad that says, I'm the man of the house? Because he keeps saying, well, I'm the man here. I'm the man. <laughs> At least. He, yeah, but it's just. It's just going to fall on death ears anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Your mom, that's right. Your mom is like, mm -mm, I don't care. It's me. So, you know, what the thing is, and that's, she's so pushy, but in a really cute way, right? Like she will push for the answer. She pushes for the info. Um, and she just doesn't take no for an answer. Do you know what I'm saying? And then do you have, yeah, her. do you have pearls from her by chance? Or do you understand her having a set of pearls? Mm, not really. Do you know if her mother had pearls that would have been passed down to her? Um, possibly. Yeah. Okay. I, my memory serves me right. I believe my grandmother might have had some curly hair. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. And so I got that. And then I get a sense from your mom though. Your mom gives me the feeling where, um, she, I want to kind of say she's a little ahead of her time in a way, right? Because she gives me this sense where she is a little mouthy. I mean, I got like, and I, I feel like it was in a time that women <laughs> weren't mouthy. Do, does that make sense? <laughs> yep. Okay. And, Very much so. And yeah, and it's like she doesn't hold back at all. And she also gives me the mm -hmm. feeling where I think she she gives me the feeling though that she like uh, she she liked to have fun though. Like I am getting a lady that didn't take life too seriously. Like she's really making me feel like she had fun where she enjoyed things, but she's just super picky about things too. I think she could be very particular. Do you remember that about her? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like it has to be her way. I think, do you understand that connection? Now she's ill before she passes mom. Am I right, honey? Yes. Is there an illness in her head at all? Or was she forgetful too? Um, I think there may have been some mental illness there, but she, you know, refused to yeah, you know, yeah, acknowledge yeah. anything like that. And yes. Yeah, exactly. So, but even now she's like, oh, just a little fuzzy. <laughs> um, <laughs> and she gives me this feeling too with it where it's like, I can't quite, 
I don't know, always know how to take her. Like, I think she could be very sweet and nice, but th she just has a temper. So I feel like, you know, when, when her yeah. temper flared up, everybody had to duck and take cover. <laughs> Yep. Um, and then she gives me this feeling where I don't think she liked you to touch her things. Did, did, does that make sense? Or um, yeah, for the yeah for the most part, yeah. Okay, because I'm seeing her bedroom, and I feel like if people went and touched things on her dresser and all, she makes me feel like she didn't like people to touch things. And right. Okay, and then she didn't like to be moved around. So when she got older, I think she had trouble walking or or taking care of herself but i don't think she liked the help of other people she does that, you understand that yep okay like there's a real fussiness with it there's just a real she's fussy she's a yes. fussy lady cranky and fussy when she got older <laughs> <laughs> yes ma'am okay and um but you know one of the things she gives me uh a, a sense of uh, gratitude for is you, because I do feel like you took care of her, or I do feel like you were the one visiting her. Is that right? Yeah, I took care of her. Okay, because she wants to thank you for that. She wants to thank you for, and putting up, listen, and I mean this with love, but putting up with her. I do believe she could be very difficult to handle, or at least that's, that's what she's telling me. So she wants to apologize for being so difficult to handle, okay? And in a way, hard to please. But I also feel like you knew her maybe more than anyone. You know what I'm saying? And then there's, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. there is, uh, is there a, a Sally or an S name in the family, Susan or Sally, that you can think of? It could be in the living or in spirit. Mm, no. Mm, are you sure there's not an S name? Are you not thinking? that I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. I feel like, well, she gives me an S. I really got the S and I got the feeling this was a woman. And I got the feeling this is someone connected in the family. And it, like I said, it could be a middle name or a last name. But she's definitely giving me the sense where she wants to kind of send love to this person. So maybe just kind of go through uh, your list of people when you get off the phone. Okay. Mally, do you have a sister as well? Okay. Would that, would you understand having a sister? No. Do you understand another no, woman uh -uh. in the family that would be like, oh, is this your mom's sister? Would you understand your mom having a sister? I mean, she has a sister, but um, I mean, she's she's been in the spirit world for a long time, too. And um, her her name didn't begin with an S. That's okay. I'm I'm moving on from the S, honey. I'm going to leave that with you. I'm not going to sit here and spend oh, all okay. my time on it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm hearing an S connection. And I'm also here, um, I heard that, but I'm going to leave it with you. I'm hearing a sister, and I'm hearing this sister giving me a sense where I think she was close to her sister, or making me feel like she's very close to her sister in the spirit world, okay? And then there's also card playing. Was it your mom that would play cards, or is it you that plays cards? Um, I mean, we would play cards. Um, she was into tarot cards. Oh, there we go. That's what it is. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's what it is. Okay. And she gives me this feeling where she would even like throw them down. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, do you know what that means? Throwing them down? No. Uh -uh. Like when she'd have a question around something, she'd go ahead and throw a card down to get the answer to it. Oh, okay. Do you know that or do you not know that? Um, I never seen her do it, but all right. I mean, that's not to say she didn't. I just never seen it. Yeah, yeah. She makes me feel like that's what she would do. So when she had a question, she would throw down a card. So, so I think she was using them maybe more than she would let you know. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I think she was actually using them to make more decisions than maybe people realized, you know? And mm -hmm. I do get the feeling where, um, I do get the feeling around your dad. You know, it's like he wanted to kind of stand up and he wanted to do things and he wanted to have... But I just feel like your mom was a bit overpowering. So it's like, even though he tried, I just feel like her force was very forceful, you know? And I don't, I don't feel like, and he put up with it, you know? He just, it's not like it, you mm -hmm. know, they, they were married and, you know, he put up with it. But he just gives me the feeling like there's just days he had to walk away. There's just days he needed a little time out of the house to catch himself. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um. 
Anyhow, your mom just wants to kind of come forward tonight and let you know how much she loves you and just how much you took care of her. And she really appreciates the things you did for her. She appreciates your patience. Like you were very, very patient with her. And she, she felt very, you were very clean to her. Like you kept her very clean. And I think that made her, that was important to her. Okay. And she just wants to thank mm -hmm. you for being there and thank you for being patient. And it's almost like you had to put your life on hold a bit while you went through this, but she's giving me the sense of letting you know how much she appreciates it and she loves you. And just, um, it's kind of like you, you understand her and you get it, but she just says, you know, if I could do it again, just letting you know, I know how to be a little softer now. So she just wants to leave that with you. Okay. Okay. All right. You have a good night. Enjoy your night. Thank you so much, Colby. I appreciate You're welcome, it. Mally. You have a good night, honey. Bye-bye. All right. Let us take another caller. Here we go. Um, how about 774? Hey, 774. This is Colby. Who is this? Hi, Colby. It's Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. What can I do for you tonight? I'm open to any messages you may get. Um, in particular, my topic would be work in Korea, but honestly, I'm open to anything. Okay, got it. Um, what I get, so, um, well, I don't know. You're not feeling like you like your job so much. Am I right? Are you just bored with where you are in your work? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because right. I, I'm feeling like it's not, there's not a pulse to it. So I didn't feel a pulse to it. And I just feel like you're just going, oh, what? And it's like, you feel stuck. Like you don't know what else to do, you know? So I feel like it's making, and you don't really want to look. <laughs> um, but it makes me feel like, you know, in the next couple of months, it's time to start looking. I think you're getting a little too comfortable. And, and I feel like it's about kind of pushing outside that zone. You know, it's a shame. You would have been a great hairdresser, huh? You never did hair, huh? I'm not, I'm not licensed, no, but I've cut um, <laughs> hair in the family. Yeah, <laughs> see that? You would, I just heard they said, oh, hairdressing was her call. You would have really enjoyed it. You would have loved it. <laughs> Um, you know, so maybe are you, or do you feel like, would you be interested in restarting a career or do you think, oh, I don't want to do that at this point in my life? Um, nothing that's too big, no. Okay. Well, hairdressing, like, anyhow, they're just saying you would be a great hairdresser and it's something you would enjoy because you're social. So having you around people and having you do something that helps and you're creative. So kind of bringing that side of you out more in your work would be really good. Because again, that's, to me, you've got a little bit more of like a nine to five kind of job. Am I right? Are you work? What are you doing now? Just feels like kind of, um, go ahead. What are you doing now? I work as a nurse. Okay. Um, well, that's not nine to five at all, <laughs> right? Are you nine to five or no? <laughs> um, no, no. Uh, okay. You know, it's interesting as a nurse, just because maybe that's just something you're tired of, or maybe it's like, it's maybe it's just too draining for you, you know, because you've been doing it for a while, but it just feels like it doesn't really feel like, I, you know, I'm looking to see like, what if you went into something else? Um, uh, you know, you could try it, but I think you got to kind of change the environment that you're in. So it doesn't, it feels like the right. environment. Feel. Yeah. The environment has to change. And then, I, but, and something like mm -hmm. not so, uh, something that just feels a little slower and something that feels like there's more meaning, like you have maybe more interaction with people in a positive way right. though. See, I think it needs to be in a positive way. Cause you got a lot of, it's weird because yeah. I'm, I feel like a lot of negative energy around your work, you know, like it's, I don't know if it's the people or the place, but it just feels like, ugh. you go home and you go, God, ah, why did I do that? <laughs> yeah. It's very depleting, honestly, yeah. lately. It should yeah. be more rewarding than it is. Yeah. So again, you know, yeah. so what I would do is this, try to think of the elements of hairdressing, right?
that's kind of, we need to add those elements into the nursing if you want to stay in nursing. So you'd have to say, well, what kind of place would offer me some creativity? What kind of nursing would offer me the opportunity to really work with clients in a more relaxed environment? And maybe gear yourself towards that environment. And it would be fun. Right. Yeah. And, and um, are you in a hospital now? What, what's your environment now? It's a hospital setting. Yeah. yeah. See, I don't think that that's the right setting. Even I'm looking to see even no. if it was a different hospital. Hospital. I think it's the energy of a hospital. Mm -hmm. So it's like something outside. So maybe nursing outside of a hospital you would really enjoy. And maybe okay. look at something I'll like. start looking. Yeah, maybe start looking at private nursing. That would be good. Yeah, just because I feel like it's something that you would enjoy. Um, but look, if you really want to restart the wheel, I, I think the hairdressing would be the way to go. <laughs> and that would be fun and creative. <laughs> yeah, I, you would be fantastic. You would really love it. I could absolutely just see you chatting away. People are feeling good. You're dealing with positive energy. And I just, I just really see you have an ability to connect with people and you're not getting to do that mm -hmm. in your job, which is so weird being a nurse, but you're not getting a chance to do that. And it feels like it's so structured and so regimented. You, you can't even really be you in the workplace. So I feel like we got a, you know, a place where it can be your personality, your fun, your creativity, you talking to them. I think that that's something to, for you to just start pondering, okay? Okay, makes great sense. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. Lots of love to you, Michelle. Have a good night. All right. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. You know, it's hard when you are bored with your job or you don't enjoy your job. You know, life is too short. And, and I know it's sometimes hard to reset the clock or feel like you didn't have the education you needed or wh whatever is needed. But it, it's so important. Like if there's something you feel like you want to do, it really doesn't matter how old you are. Get started on it and do it because you'll really, really enjoy it. You'll really get this sense of empowerment and passion around what you're doing. And if you don't know what you want to do, you got to take some time to sort that out. I've been writing a lot for different magazines lately on this. Finding your purpose, your passion. How do you get to it? How do you dive down? How do you drill down to it? And a lot of it is finding what you do naturally. For instance, Michelle, you know, naturally she's out there cutting hair, right? She's out there just cutting the nieces, nephews, whoever she needs, cutting the hair. That shows her what is natural to her. And you, she has a natural eye for color. I know I didn't say that to her on the thing, but she has a natural eye for color. So it's just being able to put that together into something that you enjoy. So if you, you are looking to change, this is a great time for change. I mean, this, this whole COVID environment has really given us an opportunity to say, are you okay with where you are in your life? Are you filled with joy? Are you feeling balanced? You know, are you feeling recharged? And have you found your passion? Don't, don't, short yourself in living and being with your passion. It, it's because I have to tell you, it is so, it's so much fun. Not that I mind tax returns and not that I don't mind helping people. Um, and I love that I had that experience, but doing what I do now is, is so far beyond fulfilling that there isn't even words for it. That's where I want you to be. That's what I want you to be doing because you deserve that, all right, regardless of how old you are. All right, here we go. Uh, let us talk to 603. Hey, 603, this is Colby. Hi, Colby. Thank Hi. you for taking my, my call. Yeah, who is this? Um, I this my name is Ann. Hi, Ann. And I want to know, Hi. So glad to be able to speak with you. And Thanks. I want to know if you can tell me anything about my late husband, um, you know, or my family. I'd appreciate it. Yes, I got it. I got it. The, the, you know, you're, you're, um, the first thing he said is he feels good that he's got a rest now. <laughs> so I think, <laughs> I think he had always been busy or you always had him doing things around the house. So I feel like it feels kind of good to just, 
kick his feet up, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. Um, and it gives me a feeling where I believe, you know, was he a little overweight, can I ask? Or were there some health issues around his weight or cholesterol? Uh, he had health issues, yes. Okay, because I'm feeling like a bit, you know when some people are a little, like they feel heavy or they feel bloated inside? I almost like he had that feeling yeah. and, and like maybe bloated feet. <laughs> Yeah, he was on dialysis, and yeah, you know, he had a lot of medical issues. That's what he feels like. So it was, it was difficult. Like, and I think he'd always have to go for these treatments. Like, so, and it was very tiring on him. Like, he makes me feel like it was very draining and exhausting. You know, and absolutely, I believe it was hard for him too because again. He feels like a man who liked to take care of things, who liked to do things, to, to be kind of that provider. So I feel like when he got ill and his body wasn't working, I feel like that was a bit of a struggle for him. Would you understand that? It absolutely was, yes. When a man can't do something, mm -hmm. uh, it's really sad. I know, yeah. Do, do you have, this is going to sound crazy, and bear with me here, honey. Does he have, I see like two tags. I don't know if they're dog tags or medical tags. Do you understand like two plates that are metal that somebody would have worn? Yeah, is he on his, his neck? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, um, dog tags? Yes. Do you, did, did he have dog tags? I don't. Or medical um, tags? Yeah, dog tags. Oh, he did have dog tags um, then. Yeah. Yeah, but he didn't wear them around his neck. Okay, but that, no, no, no. Um, he would have at one point, though. Do you understand that? He, I mean, he would have. Yeah. So he's letting me know they're around the neck. So he would have at one point. And then I'm, I'm kind of curious. Uh, did you have them at his funeral or were they, is he buried with them? I don't know why he wants to bring these dog tags into the picture. I don't know either. Um, Do you have them? I don't. I don't. Um, I still have them, yes. Okay. I got it. Okay. So I feel like when you want to connect with him or you want to just pick up those dog tags, it's almost like he's using them to connect with you. You should pick them up. When's the last time you looked at them? Okay. It? Yeah. When's the last well, time? You know yeah. what? Go ahead. What? Sometimes I put his watch on and I'll wear that. Okay. Well, grab the dog tags too, because I feel like the reason the dog tags I feel like are important because he would have been healthy and he would have been fit when he wore them, when he, do you know what I'm saying? So I feel like he wants yeah. to remind you of who he was and, and the strapping young man he was. <laughs> so I feel like that Good was, point. yeah. So I feel like it's that, but he's also very, very deep and con con caring, you know? Um, there's a deep and, and caringness. And I feel like he had a real big struggle with leaving you alone. Do you understand that? Like, I think he knew he was passing. And I feel like it, a big part was leaving you by yourself or making you feel like he wasn't going to be there. I just feel like he didn't want to leave you. Do you understand that? Yeah, he wrote, yeah, he wrote me a letter. Mm -hmm. and, um, and told and you how much he, he loved you. Yes. Yes. And it just makes yes, me. And it's hard to open. I know, I know, but he, it's because he wanted to tell you how much he loves you and that he is around you, you know? He is around you. He gives me the number seven. Do you understand July or the seventh of a month being a, a, a holiday or something for anyone? Um, and seventh, um, well, I know his birthday was in July. Oh, there you go. Perfect. That's our seven then. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, good. You're and welcome. Is there a, do you know a Richard or a Dick somewhere in, or a middle name with that, that name at all? No. Um, do you know anything? Uh, I have my son that um, had passed away. His okay. His name was John. Okay. What, but there's not a, just think of someone in the living or in spirit, but Richard or a Dick. No. No, no, I don't know a Richard or a uh, Dick, no. What about a Frank? No, it's Richard or Dick. I'm, I'm not going to change my yeah, name. I, I know. I'm you, I want you to, to, it's I all right. Know, you, to... I know, you think about it though. I feel like it's a Richard or a Dick 
and it's someone your husband knew. This is, I feel like, so it's someone, you know, if it's not a family member, it could be a neighbor, but there's someone that I feel like your husband knew. So again, you're, it, that's going to be a lot if you're not real close to the person, but just kind of sit with it and then you could put it in the comments if it makes sense. Okay. And he gives me sure, this feeling, you, your husband does let me know where, that he is with your son, um, but you have another son, no? Is there two sons? Or yeah. more? Okay. Yeah. He wants, they want to acknowledge, and the one is in the living. We have one in spirit, one in the living. You're right. Okay. They want to acknowledge the one in the living as well, okay? Um, Okay. I'm, I'm kind of curious. Was it the older brother that's in the spirit world? Is that correct? It would be the older one? Yes. Okay. Because he's given the yes. younger brother a hard time. Like he's saying, listen, I might be in the spirit world, but I'm still the, I'm still the oldest. I still get the top bunk. <laughs> so there you go. there's a little bit of that going on. Um, and then I feel like his passing would have been more sudden though. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. He's only 19. Yeah. It makes me feel like, and there's, there's something in his chest or a sudden passing impact that you're aware of? Yes. Um, okay. uh, Cruiser was, um, my son was on his way to work at Honeywell and um, a cruiser was chasing a kid on a mini bike and yeah. the cop went airborne, went over the other side of the road where my son was going and killed him instantly. Oh, so sorry, honey. And yeah, he, his, I wrote it off. It makes me feel like it just, it's almost like it came right at him. It's what it makes me feel like, you know? Um, he didn't and have a chance. It, though he didn't. But, you know, he says, I guess just maybe if there's some peace in it, it feels very, very instant. So it's like, it, it's very instant passing, you know? Um, but it gives me a feeling of being around you a lot. And they kind of tell me, um, and it was nice, obviously, just for your, your husband to see your son and to be with your son. Who's, is there a Michael? Do you know the name Michael? I know somebody by the name of Michael, yes. Um, okay. And there's not a Michael middle name in your family with one of the boys? I'm just trying to figure this out. I have a nephew named Michael. That's it. Because it made me feel like this is more family, not a friend. Okay, I got it. I got it. And there's also, um, they just keep giving me a feeling of uh, letting me know that they're strong men. So like your husband lets you know that he is around you and that he's been with you. You guys have been married a very, very long time. Did you celebrate 50 years? Because he just showed me the number 50. No. Okay. Um, no, we Go ahead, what? No, um, I was wondering if um, you could talk about the living um, on what? my daughter. What, sweetheart? Girls. What, honey? I have two girls that are living. Uh-huh. Would you know anything about them? Uh, well, then I would be going into a more psychic reading, and we got we kind of get to do one thing I here. I know. Uh, and and you're, we're almost getting to the end, so I would love to kind of keep going, but then you'd end up with the whole show. <laughs> Go ahead. I know. So Go ahead. I, I, I do, don't want to interrupt you. Okay. I just want you to know that your husband wraps his arms around you, and he does give you his love, and he does let you know that he is okay and that they are with the son, but they are giving love to the the family and there are uh grandbabies in the family so there's just kind of like a lot of love and they're just letting you know he's with you and he just he just says you keep being strong okay so don't forget to try those dog I tags know. you hold on to that watch and just know that he's with you okay he always says that be strong yep be strong honey you got this that's what he said all right so you have a beautiful yeah, so, night and lots my, of love does my son do I, my son have anything to say? They're just giving you lots of love, both of them, honey. I, again, I got to kind of get other callers, and I would love to, Ann, but I, I, it's, it's, you know, you may want to book a private, and we could do it all day long together, but I'm so sorry, but just right. know they're together and that they are with you, okay? Thank you so much for the reading. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Night. You're welcome. I know it's really tough because it's like, you know, it's like, oh, and so, and so, and so, and it's, it's that they all are there, but 
we really want to, I, wa I want to try to be fair to get as many people in. So let's take another caller, okay? Here we, uh, here we go. Let us do 610. Hey there, 610. This is Colby. Hi. Who is this? Hi, Colby. It's Brooke. Hi, Brooke. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. What can um, I do for you? I was just wondering if my loved ones on the other side had any messages for me and my daughter. I was just going to say me, but she always feels like she's left out. So <laughs> I said me and my daughter. Okay, got it. Now, would you understand a woman on the other side that's like a mother for you? Would that make sense? And maybe it's a grandmother yes. or your daughter? Okay. Um, so she wants she wants to be the first one that comes in, okay? And then, but she's okay. funny because she says you do leave the daughter out. <laughs> So she's like, she's like, she does leave you, you, her out. Um, now you understand. So your mom knew your daughter. She makes me feel like she knew her, uh, but maybe she was younger when she passed or something. Right. Um, no, she just recently, did you want me to tell you that she just recently passed? Okay. Um, hang on. So hang on one second. September. Yeah. Yeah. Hang on one second. Well, don't tell me all of it. Wait. <laughs> I gives, know. I'm sure. Okay. She <laughs> gives me, she gives me the feeling of being around your daughter and she gives me the feeling of, but it's like your daughter is always her baby though. So I, I guess she doesn't really recognize that she's a grown <laughs> yeah. person. Like, cause it's still her baby girl. It's still her baby. It's like enough about you. It's like about her granddaughter, you know? And yeah. she, she gives so me the feeling of baby. like, yep. yeah. And she gives me the feeling of loving to talk to her and lo oh, loving to give it. <laughs> Wait, I'm like, I, is your daughter there by chance? She is, yeah. Okay, yeah. So tell her I'm sorry if I'm a... Hi there, sweetheart. I'm sorry if I'm about to get you into trouble. Um, but it's like you would always talk to your grandmom about things before you would talk to your mom about things. So she loved that you had that connection together, okay? So she... And she gives me this feeling of like... She just... She, this, she doesn't feel like she judges, you know, you guys? Like she doesn't make me feel like she's... She makes me feel like she's very open... Um, and she just, mm -hmm. it's more about you guys being happy or you guys kind of doing your thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, and, yep. and there's also this feeling where I believe she was very put together. Does that make sense? Like either she looked really nice or really took care of herself. Do you understand that? Sometimes, but we used to make fun of her outfit. So maybe. <laughs> no, okay, well, <laughs> well, you would think that she thought she looked good. I think she loved how she looked. I don't think she appreciates she this. She doesn't appreciate <laughs> this on you. Um, and she must have had a knack for mixing patterns. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, like things that might not have gone together. Is there like a, not a bohemian feel, a lot of large, a loud patterns. I keep feeling like there's a lot of patterns. She loved like, she was so thin, but loved like moo moo type. The, yeah, that's what I was saying. That's what I was getting a little bit of that bohemian, like those kind of robes or um, like those yeah. hippie, hippie kind of robes. Do you know what I'm saying? That's that's the feeling I was yeah, getting. Leave her alone. <laughs> she even says, "Leave me alone." Um, what's with her hair? Do, did something happen with her hair, or does she do her hair in a different way? She was starting to lose her hair. Oh, that's what it is. Because, had, like, because little... yeah, she, she she showed me this like this thing at the front of her hair. So I don't know if she was wearing headbands to kind of cover it, or doing little things on her head to kind of <laughs> cover her hair. Yeah, they're a little chemo cap. Oh, got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyhow, and then she does make me feel like, I don't know. I just think she she's eccentric. There's a bit of eccentricness to her, you know? Artist, like really, she's her, in, her own inner artist, right? And um, I just feel yeah. like, I feel like with her, she really could have been an artist. Did she enjoy painting or anything yep. like this? Okay, because that's really what she gives me. Um, and then now with the, the daughter, your daughter still lives with you. Is that right? Or is she moving out? Yeah. 
No, she's she's eleven. She's young, but she oh, wait, wait, I we have don't... a son, and no, she, no one ever acknowledges her. So that's why she's saying that. Okay, I got it. She he, she gives me the feeling there's a picture. Do you have her painting in in your room, honey? Yeah. Okay. Aww. That's what that's what she's trying to say. She's trying to. So I didn't know if you had an apartment or a room, but she made me feel like she, you have her picture in there. Um, and then um, she just kind of gives me. And I think she's got big stone rings, or is she into stones? Uh, she had like bracelets for her. Um, one condition she had, she wore like those metallic bracelets. Uh huh. Does it have stones on it? No, they're stones. I'm seeing yeah, stones. Yeah, they're like, they like round, shiny. Yeah, I would, I would say they were pebbles. They, did you ever see those metallic bracelets people wear for pain? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe like a shocker kind of looking bracelet with the things. Nope. Listen. Yeah, it sounds like what you're. They yeah, look like pebbles though. But mm -hmm. okay. No, there's rocks no. somewhere. She showed me rocks. So I don't know what it, maybe it's around your house that there's rocks or colored rocks or th there's something around rocks is what I'm getting. So maybe you just, you'll I'll see, it's going to be around your place. There's got to be rocks. She, she knows what, she knows what she's talking okay. about. She says, <laughs> she, she's, she really lived in her own world. I think, you know, she really did. Um, <laughs> And, but you know, that makes it fun for the imagination, you know, and I just feel like she gives a strong sense of letting you know that she loves you guys, letting you know that she's around you and really offering to let you know that she is okay. Like there's no need to worry about her. Um, I think she's got major breathing issues at the end. Is that right? Yeah. Like if she can't yeah, she breathe did. and the wheezing. Um, and it just wasn't fun. Was she on oxygen also? She made me feel like there's a tube at her nose. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, my mother-in-law did, but my mom not as much. But, like, you know, she did, like, the hospice care towards the end. So, I mean, that all makes I sense. I think, okay, I get it. Well, she gives me this, she gives me this sense where, I am curious, does she have blue eyes is that who has blue eyes i'm trying um no my mother-in-law yeah. and my mom had green eyes um i feel like one of you two have blue eyes is that right no but we wish one of them would have blue <laughs> eyes we always complain about that they got i brown know eyes, but that's funny. um <laughs> Um, I see blue nice. eyes. I keep feeling like there's blue eyes. She keeps mentioning blue eyes, so I'm not really sure why, but I'll leave it with you, okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you guys have a beautiful night. Lots of love to you and take care, okay? Thanks, Colby. Appreciate it. Thanks You're for welcome. Us. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, we're going to do one quick one. This has to be really quick. Um, so just know that. Uh, let us, a quick one. So I'm making sure you know the next caller is quick. <laughs> All right, here we go. 602. Hey, six, uh oh. 602. Hi. Hi there. Are you in a car driving? Yes, I am. Uh, we, don't do, we don't do the Thank readings you. on air with the uh, driving. What's a quick question you have? I I don't really do them while people are driving. Uh, I just wanted to I just wanted to know if I should follow light work or not. Um It is, but maybe focus more on which area. Like so it says yes, but I think you've got a couple modalities, you know? And it feels like to focus on mm -hmm. one that really ha makes you you're most passionate about. Do you understand that? Like don't maybe not it's not dipping your hands into too much. So, um, because I feel like you can do, like, you feel like you have a lot of energy. So like you could do energy work, but I keep really feeling mediumship and psychic too. So what modality is your favorite modality? Uh, mediumship. Yeah. See, so it's kind of like, you know, again, you follow your heart, but I'm hearing follow the path that you're most passionate about. Cause that's where you're going to have success. So try not to dabble into too many different things. Do, do you see what I'm saying? 
Good. Yeah, have you taken a lot of classes? Is that right? Okay. Have you done Reiki or energy work? No, I have not. Um, they keep showing me energy or healing work. I don't think that that's what you're doing. Um, it's interesting. See, I bet you you're just naturally really good at it, huh? I just feel that you must be because that's what they're giving me. Like you have a lot of modalities and for you to focus. And I felt like focusing more on the psychic and the mediumship is maybe that best area for you. Okay. Yeah, you can do it. Just, um, what is the other things you're doing though? Uh, what, what other, are, what tools are you using? Are you doing cards? What, there's something else that they're telling me. So what is that for you? Um, I'm using a, a pendulum. Oh, that's a girl. You don't need no pendulum. Stop that. You don't need that. You, you don't need that. That's what it is. Stop that. <laughs> that's funny. You have a strong okay. team. You have a, I'm, you have a strong I'm, team around you. <laughs> Anyhow, really, you yes, don't I need. Do. I you don't, my entourage. Yeah, you don't need that to connect. I mean, listen, those are fun. And I think I, I play with them with my students. But I guess this is more about them getting you to trust, you getting you to commit, and maybe letting go of the, the tools because it really is natural, especially in the mediumship, okay? Okay. All right. Thank Lots you. of love Thank to you. you. You're welcome. And next time, don't call me from the car. <laughs> okay, I won't. All night. right. You have a good night. Bye-bye. All right, everybody, that is the end of our show. I want to thank you all for tuning in, for hanging out, for joining me on air. Remember, Monday night, Colby Connects. So grab your ticket. The tickets are limited. You're going to have a great time. We have an hour and a half of messages, an hour and a half together. So join me for Colby Connects. We're going to have a great time. And um, you guys remember to get out there. Feel free to share. Lots of love. Next week, I have a very special guest, so stay tuned and have a good night. Thank you for listening to The Colby Rebel Show. Be sure to follow Colby on social media at Psychic Rebel. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, please head on over to iTunes to leave a review to help Colby grow the tribe. Colby is an international psychic medium, teacher, best-selling author, and speaker. She is a master teacher of the Lisa Williams International School of Spiritual Development and is the owner of the Colby Rebel Spirit Center in Los Angeles. Visit ColbyRebel.com.